Maybe we'll do that if we have a lot of time next week. Yeah. If the stack has a language that's equivalent to the language we're using in the machine, so for example, we're using ones and zeros, which means we've got two different plot, two different uh, symbols. Mm -hmm. The stack has two symbols. Does it have the full power? I yes. Mean, if, if, and if the language only has one symbol, the mm -hmm. stack still only has one symbol, would it still have full power? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you mean if the input alphabet is zero. is just zeros, can you still do every context-free language over zeros with just a single stack symbol? I don't know the answer. So it's, it's That's not a good question. An with the, with the no, no, it's got nothing to do with that. Okay. You, you need general stack symbols to have full power in, in a non-deterministic machine. If you restrict it to one symbol, you don't have full power. But but maybe for single alphabets they're equivalent and it doesn't matter. I don't know. That's a good question. I'll think about it this afternoon. That's the kind of question I just put in a quiz and then it ends up being a paper three <laughs> years later. Now, I don't know if that question is easy or hard, it, it, but it's interesting. I don't know the answer. Okay. <coughs> Questions? Do people build these machines? You mean like in their backyard and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, can you buy a push-down machine? Uh, <laughs> yeah, with extra batteries. No, not really. I mean, you can simulate them. You simulate them. We, um, you know, the what Yak pretty much does is simulates the action of one of these pushdown machines, more or less. But you write a program to do this, and the program has the data structure of a stack. So you don't really, you know, have a machine that just does this. It's too simple. Oh, I see. You mean like? Oh, sure. There might be microprocessors that have programs that are really push-down machines inside them. But even finite, you're not really buying finite state machines. You're buying a whole program that just happens to be simulating the finite state okay. machine. Yeah. Oh, you know, I take that back. I bet, well, you, I bet your traffic lights are just finite state yeah. machines without... Uh, no. Nowadays, they're probably yeah, microprocessors. <laughs> yeah, you see, I'm not... Certainly 30 years ago, there were machines that were just finite state machines. And, uh, and I'm not sure if there's actually, like... I don't know, like, yeah. No, you, <laughs> your toaster's a push-down machine. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I didn't. That's <laughs> three dollars. Three bucks for this setup. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I had found this finite state machine, and then somebody said, oh, if we add this, it becomes this. You mean like what happens first? Yeah, um, did it go that way, or is this something that was created later to build a hierarchy? I don't know which form formalization came first. Um, I'm not sure. The f all the theorems about finite state machines were done, you know, the, the basic ones were done in the 50s and then 60s. And context-free languages, same time, similar. And that's when compiler... Turing machines officially before that, right, right. So I guess in some ways, you know, here's a general mode of computation, and here's, um, <laughs> and here's, uh, and let's cut it down a little bit and get these other form formalities. I don't know, Todd. Do you know you, from the linguistic point of view, which came first, uh, context-free languages or finite state machines? No, yeah, I'm not sure. I can look it up. You might think they went in order, yeah. Part of it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's like that pain in the ass kid on my block. <laughs> He's well behaved now. <laughs> All I can think of is Jack Nicholson. Okay, so that's a push down machine example. Non determinism is a little bit different than it was before, but more or less the same idea. And what we're going to do is one more example. This time we have to think a little bit more. It won't be quite as easy as a 0 to the n, 1 to the n. And we'll need to use more than one symbol on the stack. And we'll do it together as a group. And we'll go around the room so everyone can participate. And there'll be a little trick involved. All right, so this, this line, and then there's ice cream at the end. <laughs> this language is the language of, of uh, even length palindromes. W can be any symbol over the alphabet 0, 1. And the R here means that you're reversing W. So it's any set of symbols over 0 and 1 followed by their reverse. That's what this 
notation w means. Is like a string, not a string. W is any string here. W is an element of zero plus one star. Okay, so W is any string in, in zeros and ones, and as long as you have its reverse, that will be in our language. So these are even length palindromes. Let's write a push down machine, and in fact, let's try, if at all possible, to keep our machines deterministic. Because, well, because we'd like to if we can. <laughs> that's not very. An yes, an aesthetic print, that's right. Um, OK. Well, it's going to be hard to keep it deterministic here. How come? How would you do this? What's an idea? Joe. Read the first part of the string when you push on the stack. OK. Uh, read the first part of the string. And by that, you mean the first half, presumably. So you read the first half, and it, you're reading zeros and ones. As you read the zeros and ones, we can put x's and y's. You can put zeros and ones on the stack, too. Whatever. You put the zeros and ones on the stack. And now that you get to the second half, you're ready to see the reverse string. And since you put the first half on the stack, what you're going to see is actually hopefully sitting on the stack in the order that you're going to see the new symbols, because they're put on as a stack in reverse. So then if they match, the new symbol on the top of the stack will just pop it off and keep going. And as long as they keep matching, we're fine. And if the stack empties the second we get to the end of the string, then we say, OK. That's a good idea. But, <laughs> right, how do you know where that middle part is? How do you know where the middle part is? Can we do an oh. arbitrary number of pushes and or pops um, for every input? Like you get a one? Uh, officially not, but, but you can always do it anyway just by adding more states. Like say on this state, I want to push two things on this symbol. So I go to another state, I push one. That just goes to another state, pushes the other, and that goes back in the loop. So yes, you can do it, but not, it's not part of the official rules. Okay. We really do need extra states to simulate. Uh, yeah, Joe? Is there only one stack? Yes, there's only one stack. Okay. Yeah. So here, here's what I'm going to do. Since nobody's screaming out the answer, I'm just going to make this over the alphabet 0, 1, and 2. <laughs> and I'll put a 2 in the middle. So it's a different language. It's easier to recognize now. When you see the two, then you send a message to Joe to start doing the second half. It's much easier, I know. But, but everything we do with this is going to be very similar to the way you do it without the two. So we might as well do it with the two if it makes everybody feel better. <laughs> and then we'll fix it. And then we'll fix it. It is a good strategy to use in general. Mathematicians do this all the time. Computer scientists do this all the time. You have a really hard problem, and it just makes you uncomfortable, and you're not sure you can do it. So, but you see another problem that's really similar, and you're almost certain you can do it. So just do the one you can do, because very often, your discomfort was completely a fantasy. And when you're done doing the problem that you thought was easy, you say, oh, that first one is really the same thing, and then you're done. Not very often, but it does happen. <laughs> it does happen. It really does. So can you just have one state that pushes whatever it is you get, mm. and then a second state that pops the mm. same thing, mm -hmm. and in the middle, you it's a non-deterministic. It always goes if the state's the same. That doesn't really describe something that looks like Yeah, that. no. Actually, yeah, you're doing a great job. You have just the right idea. But, uh, but you're, de you're, in the, you're doing it without the two, and I want to do it with the two. So I'm going to have the two that goes in between. No. And then we'll do it your way, which is right. That's a good idea, Michael. <laughs> Michael's smart. All right. We're going, to look, we're going to do Joe's strategy here. So we'll call this state Joe. It's really the push state. All right, it's the Joe state. And we're going to just read zeros and ones. And as we read zeros and ones, we're going to push x's and y's. You know, I, you know, gonna, I don't, I don't want to push zeros and ones only because anybody who's not completely used to the notation yet is going to get mixed up which part of the comma is the symbol and which is the stack. And maybe none of you will, but, but I'll pretend I will. All right. Uh, I'm going to stay pushing here. If I see a zero, what do I do? I push an x. Do I care what's on the stack when I'm pushing? So I'm just going to write any. Okay, 0, anything, 